This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. The inside of this PowerBuds cabin is not only too dark and dreary, but the materials are completely worn out and are in need of being desperately updated. We'll be redoing the entire cabin, but in this video we're going to show you how to install carpet style headliner. If you need to install headliner or hall liner and your boat or other application has a lot of contoured shapes, Sayerite highly recommends using the carpet style headliner because it is shape conforming. Let's take a look one more time at how the cabin looked before we transformed it using DIY materials from Sayerite. As you can see, installing new headliner can greatly improve the overall appearance of a boat's cabin. Of course, new upholstered cushions can also instantly change our outdated cabin into a stunning showpiece that will impress everyone. Brian, the owner of this 1982 Regal Ambassador 245XL, will be heading up our DIY tutorial on how to install headliner in this video. Here's Brian. Okay, we're getting ready to install the next section of headliner. Uh, just a, a brief uh, moment of surface prep. Uh, basically, we've taken down the old headliner. We've made sure that nothing is loose. Uh, everything's pretty solid here. Now, you can see there's still a little bit of fuzzy left from the old headliner. Uh, if we were working with a vinyl backed headliner or something like that, it would be important for us to have a perfectly smooth surface. Now, you can see there's a lot of imperfection in the surface already, uh, so we don't need to worry about that too much with the, uh, the, fab or the, the carpet headliner. Now, the other thing too is if I worked at getting all that off, uh, I would actually rough this surface up more uh, as I found in some of the other areas. So I'd rather stick to the somewhat smooth surface I already have and just deal with those fuzzies that are there. Up next, we'll install the carpet style headliner. Okay, we're getting ready to, to put up this uh, section here. Now what I've done is I put a piece of tape to mark the center of my headliner because this six foot is gonna get us just barely all the way across. And so I do need to try to keep it in the center. So I've marked that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray this center section here is gonna be the first part that I'm gonna glue. I'm also going to try to spray a similar estimate of that. Now, as I spray, I'm gonna go both ways and do a bit of a crisscross pattern uh, to make sure I get the, the glue evenly applied. Now, it is possible to get too much glue. You do want a nice even coat. If you get too much glue, what'll happen is it won't tack up uh, very quickly and you'll have kind of a wet uh, thing. If you try to put it up too soon and it hasn't tacked, you'll actually start to get the glue uh, to come through. So you wanna get just enough glue, not too much, not too little. And I will note too, these are the old cushions. We're gonna be replacing these. Uh, you obviously would not wanna do this on your new cushions. I purposely put these in because we completely don't care if we get any overspray on them at all. We'll be using 3M General Trim Adhesive, available from Sayerite. I'm going to set this to the medium spray point. And as we apply the glue, you'll notice I'm not going all the way up to the adjoining headliner. That is intentional because what I'm going to do is I'm not actually going to stick my very edge of the headliner just yet. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue up close and then I'm going to trim both edges because uh, I'm going to have a little bit of overlap and then I'll trim both edges and I'll be able to marry them up perfectly. Okay, now we need to give that a moment to tack up. And in addition to the mask, we do have a fan that's blowing in one of the windows here, and so there's actually a bit of a cross breeze coming through the, uh, uh, through the boat so we have adequate airflow. Uh, if you didn't do that, you would need to have a full respirator on. Okay, we've let this sit for uh, for a couple minutes. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to touch this, and and what you'll find is it 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 still uh, you want it to not feel terribly wet. Uh, you know, it's still going to be a little damp, and as you can see, it's actually not very sticky on its own. Uh, it has to mate to the other side. Now here you can see we're starting to tack up a little bit more because we're on a hard surface. Uh, so we're going to give that just a little just a little bit more time on this. We want this good and uh, uh, tacked up. Then we're going to find our center section here. We're going to overlap these just slightly and you'll see pretty much as soon as I stick it, it starts to stick. And so we just want to go ahead and start 
working from that center section. Make sure we're keeping our edges where we have some overlap. And right now we're just gluing, obviously, that section where we applied glue to both sides. Now you can see here we're running just a little short, so what we want to do is just give us a little bit of stretch here. That's the nice thing about this headliner, it is, it is very forgiving. Now it's important to note that once you stretch it, it doesn't necessarily rebound. So you don't want to over stretch it or you'll never get it back. And as discussed, we're not going to glue all the way to the very edge. Now here, we're not sticking. The reason is I got glue here, but I didn't get glue here. So we'll have to you know, spray both sides of that all over again. And we'll do that as we start to work towards the outside further. Brian uses the 3M General Trim Adhesive, sprays it one direction on the hard surface and the fabric surface, then sprays it the other direction, a crisscross pattern. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do, in addition to this, I'm going to do this entire front section here, so I'm going to spray back behind. After spraying, allow the solvent to evaporate until it becomes tacky. Now we're going to go ahead and start sticking this next section. So what I'm going to do here is I've obviously already applied my glue and let it tack up. And I'm just going to work to the outside. Now, here you'll notice I am going to try to get, I'm actually stretching my headliner a little bit, which I don't recommend, you know, doing too terribly much. But I want to try to get to this very edge and the headliner is very close. So I'm just going to stretch her a little bit and continue to stick. And as you can see, I made it to the edge I wanted to make it to. Now, obviously, we're not going to make it all the way to the side of the hull, and that's okay. Uh, on the underside here, there's a groove. So what, what my goal here is to get it into that groove, uh, because then I'll take the side portion and I'll bring it up and match them up in a groove. This headliner, you can match up fairly well on a nice smooth surface. Uh, it's even a little bit easier yet to match up two pieces in a groove where you can kind of overcut them a little bit and tuck everything in. You probably won't be able to see any of this, but... <laughs> Well, that's tacking up. We're going to talk a little bit about the cables here. As you can see, we've got a few different cables that run throughout the headliner. Obviously, for the lighting over here, there'll be uh, lights and fans. This is where one cable is going to join to the other one as well as to a light. Now, what we've done here is we just basically uh, ran the headliner up to the cable. Uh, I cut a small slit in the headliner. And so, basically, I had glued headliner up to here, a small slit. I just poked my cables through and then glued the rest of the portion on. Uh, you can see, I mean, obviously there's a little bit of a bump there, uh, but it will really hold things in place. From the factory, they used kind of a tape to hold the cables. I tried that, things weren't working out so well. Uh, I did get some really small cable clamps and put those into place. Uh, you can see along the side wall here, uh, we had a few more cables. I used the larger wire tie clamps. I got a little bit of a wrinkle here. That's okay, as long as I do it fairly quickly uh, before the glue really tacks up, we'll pull that back up and just try to kind of work that wrinkle out. You can see that this headliner is just really, really forgiving uh, with things like that. I did it again. It's important to do that very quickly because this glue, once it tacks, it will stick. Now the ridge that we're working for, it still it comes all the way up here. So even though our carpet's gonna be a little larger, that's where we're gonna stop this section. We're gonna try to come up here. Now you can see here, I'll be able to tuck a little bit up over. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't recall whether there was trim here. Uh, we'll see how the carpet comes up and how it fills that. I'll determine then if I really need to put trim in there uh, after the fact or not. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this section 
Uh, it is a fairly large section, and uh, just, just for timing and things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half the section, and then I'll do the other half. Um, this is probably small enough you can do it in one shot. I'm just going to go, go ahead and do it in two. Also, that'll allow me to kind of keep uh, the headliner open, and I've got air blowing up here through. So, And I've removed all of the screws uh, for the deck hardware. Uh, the original headliner went right over top of all the screws. I wasn't really a big fan of that because if there is a leak, I'd prefer to, to find it quickly and re-bed it. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is in lieu of having everything hidden, uh, I'll have hardware that it's exposed, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, washers and I've got uh, acorn nuts to put onto there. So. We obviously want to try to avoid getting it on our vinyl, uh, but if we do get some on the vinyl, uh, don't fret, it does clean up very easily with the 3M adhesive remover. Got a few wrinkles over here. Actually, that's the hull. Oh. Or the deck. Right here, we have a couple of lines. It looks like they're wrinkles, but this is actually uh, imperfections in the fiberglass. I could feel the, the bumps there. And, you know, that's one of the nice things about this headliner. If we tried to use the vinyl headliner, which, although it looks really nice, it shows all that stuff sticks out like crazy. And here I'm just kind of working it. There's another another groove here. I'm just working it into the groove. There's glue in there and I want to go ahead and use that adhesion of the glue and hold it in place. You see there we've got more bumps but now you can see right here it's not sticking really well. What's happened there is I got glue on my ceiling but I didn't go quite far enough with my glue on the headliner. So what I'm gonna do is kind of pull that back just a little bit. And then what I'll do is spray my glue onto both sides and, and, and glue that as I work my way across. As I climb up here, I can really see I got good coverage on my ceiling, but I just got nothing on my carpet, which is why it didn't stick. So important to note that you gotta get both sides or it's just not gonna work. Okay, on this side, what you can see we've done is we went all the way to this outer channel because we had enough headliner to get over there, and we're going to cut that away and, and match it up in this channel. Now, on this other side, that's actually the channel that all of our wiring is in. Now, it's a lot easier to hide wiring in fabric than it is to try to end at the fabric. So what we're going to do on this side is we're going to choose this other line, and we're going to stop it right there, and that's where we'll mate up our fabrics. That way we've got fabric that comes across the wiring and matches up here too. Part of the reason to do it that way too is if I do ever need to access this wiring I'm only pulling down a small section. I'm not pulling down a big large section so I could actually uh, in reality if I ever have to get to this I could pull it down and with this fabric uh, sometimes you can actually pull it down re-glue it and put it back up um, you know usually what will happen is it'll stretch a little bit you have to cut a little bit away but um, you know, that's just kind of thinking down the road. If I do ever need to get to it, I'd rather take down a small piece than a big piece. Now that you know how to install the carpet style headliner, we need to trim it to fit. That's coming up next. Okay, what I'm using here is a, uh, uh, a curved edge carpet blade. That seems to work pretty well for me. Uh, it's important to just, I mean, you, you have to change your blade at really every cut. This blade that's in here, I don't remember which edges are new, so I'm just gonna consider this to be a used blade. So I'm gonna put a fresh blade in. This is a 24 foot uh, boat. Uh, I expect I'm probably gonna use uh, probably 20 to 25 blades on this, so. Uh, just don't skimp on the blades, they're not that expensive, buy a big pack, use them up. 
Now on this particular cut, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut on the far side of the groove. Uh, I'm gonna cut that now because then when I come back with the other material, I'll still have enough to kind of overlap just a little bit and make one cut down the middle. But I'm cutting this away just to kind of get it out of our way so we can work with the rest of it. And then what we're going to do here is we're just going to carefully cut away this excess because this center section we're going to just tuck over and then we'll uh, we'll cut trim that off on the other side. Now what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and start our cut here to get our excess out of our way. And I'm starting to tear so I'm just going to go ahead and change my blade one more time. And what I'll do is I'll pull that panel off and I'll clean this up on the inside. That's actually the anchor anchor locker, so I don't want a whole lot of stuff hanging in there. But we'll clean that up later. And once again, you can see I'm cutting at the far side of my groove. That way my mating can overlap just a little bit and then we'll cut them away. Okay, now as I was transitioning, I couldn't really see this area. Uh, the cameraman decided not to tell me I was making a mistake here. <laughs> but you can see I got kind of a big ripple there. Um, this has not been glued up too long, so I should be able to pull it down. And I'm just gonna pull just a little bit past that area. And then what I'll do is I'll re-glue that area, uh, see if it's still tacky. Uh, still fairly tacky, but I am gonna spray just a little bit more glue in there. So we'll re-glue that before we do our edge. Now what we're gonna do is just kind of pull and stretch and, and work as we do this. And that way we'll keep that, uh, we'll keep that wrinkle out of there. So as you can see, even if you make a bit of a mistake with this stuff, it's pretty easily repaired. Up next, Brian will talk about the seams and how to make a smooth transition. Okay, now what we've got here is we've got the two edges. Now this edge is not glued, and actually when I did the other edge, although it's up there, you can see that this edge is also not glued down. So what we're going to do is get things to lay in place. There's two ways to do this. You can either cut the top layer and try to match it with the bottom layer as close as possible. Now you'll be able to kind of stretch and get things into place. So you can either cut one layer right against the other one, which is what we're going to start out doing here. But then as we get over here, we get a little bit curvy here. So what I'm going to do through this area is cut across both to get a nice straight edge. And as I come down through here, I'm going to cut across both to get a nice straight edge. Now I've put a fresh edge on my knife. I'm gonna make a portion of the cut. Um, as soon as it starts to pull at all, I'm gonna go ahead and change my blade uh, so that way I don't start just shredding material. change my blade I'm starting to pull okay now when you're getting your second side out just kind of reach up start to pull it aside if you get to any areas like this where you can see it wasn't cut real well just kind of come across it that way you don't stretch your carpet out, like that right there. And this is with a nearly brand new edge. 
And so now what you can see is we've got two edges that will match up almost perfectly. Now part of the reason I left a little bit more on this side to work with than this side is because I'm going to glue this side up first and then I'm going to match this side up to it. And actually with the way I cut, I almost cut to where the glue is. So there's not a whole lot there. We want to be careful not to stretch this too much as we go. And at this point I'm spraying both the carpet and the, uh, the hull in one kind of fell swoop. And then we'll come back and here we're going to spray this. Now what I should have done here, and I will do this for the next one, is when I'm up really close like that, that's when you want to move it to the low spray. I was really putting too much adhesive there. We're going to have to wait a little bit longer for this to tack up. Okay, what we're going to do here first is we're going to go ahead and this short edge, we're going to carefully roll it into place without stretching and just get it, go ahead and get it tacked up in place. And now with our longer edge, we're actually going to kind of work backwards here. I'm going to try to tuck the edge up first up against it and then work my way back and that way you can see what I can do is I can either push back to get into place or pull forward to try to get my edge as perfect as possible As I mentioned earlier, if the background was white, this would be far easier, but with this being a, a dark color, it's going to show every little bit. Okay, now we've got that in place. We really don't want to, we don't want to mess with it too much. We want to let it get good and stuck. What we can do later is we can come back and we can really brush back and forth, kind of work the fibers around. If there's any hanging fibers, we can trim those up with a, uh, uh, with a razor or sharp pair of scissors. But there's that edge. Okay, we're getting ready to finish this other edge here. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of test fitting things, seeing where it's at. Now you can see right here, it doesn't really overlap. Well, it overlaps by just, you know, uh, just a smidgen. Uh, it's pretty hard to cut just a little bit off of that. It'll actually be easier here if I don't cut any off, but rather just marry it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of lay that in place for a guide, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut this section here so that I can lay it up. And this, I'm really just going to kind of cut on the top layer rather than try to cut through both layers because I really didn't overlap enough to, to cut both layers. I kind of messed myself up a little there. Now when we get over here, we've got obviously a lot more to work with and this is going to be a rather uh, uh, visible seam so here I definitely want to get a really fresh sharp cut and cut definitely through both layers at once. I'm going to start with that little nubbin there. Once again I do have a brand spanking new blade in here. And for this portion, I'm going to go ahead and turn to a fresh edge. Okay. 
Let's see, that'll match up nice. Now here I've got a little couple fuzzies like we talked about earlier. We can come back and trim those out later. We can see everything's a good fit. So now we'll go ahead and get it down to where we can get glue in it. We don't want to stretch it at all. We just want to get down and give ourselves some room. And that's glued right there. That's all glued, so I'm not going to pull any of that. You can see that some of the edges look pretty jagged, but they actually will fit together nicely. As Brian has mentioned, the carpet style headliner is excellent for boats that have a lot of contoured shapes like this that have to take turns and have a lot of curves. Vinyl headliner will not do this. Vinyl does not stretch and conform. And as you can see, even these seams that were cut fairly jagged with his razor blade can be pushed into each other and still look beautiful. Nicely done, Brian. Looks great. Up next, we will install carpet style headliner to the hull, and towards the bow, it takes a rather abrupt curve. Brian will show how he deals with that using this conformable carpet style headliner slash hull liner. This section here, we've already measured and we've cut a piece that's uh, slightly larger than where we're going to go. Uh, what we want to do is, because we have this kind of nice flat surface, we're going to start with that surface, because, especially with the curve we have here. We're going to start with that as we go. We want to make sure that we keep enough material to come down far enough. Uh, we only need to come down to uh, just above this line here. Uh, if we go, go over, that's fine, we'll trim it. But uh, uh, we need to make sure we keep enough material to come down to the line, obviously to come back up to our, uh, uh, to, to mate with our other stuff. But we want to start with this flat surface because then we're going to have to possibly stretch a little bit to come out and around and then get everything to form in. If we start down with this contour, when we try to come up, we're going to end up with some bunching and puckering and stuff. So. I'm going to start with the flat surface there. There we go. And this edge here, because we already have a nice clean edge, I'm just going to butt these two edges together to be a little bit easier. That's why I'm putting my uh, adhesive all the way to the edge. Continue to work forward. The hull of the boat is curved, and the carpet style headliner will have to take that curve. But remember, it's shape conforming, so it should do this well. And see, here's where I make sure I'm myself enough. Brian's ensuring that he leaves enough fabric that it can be joined together to the carpet style headliner on the ceiling. See here, with, with how much the boat curves, I really need to be cognizant here and make sure I can make it fit. In fact, I'm going to have to stretch a little bit up here. Okay, now you can see how this is really tightened up. What we're going to need to do when we go to work this in is we'll just stretch it just a little bit first, just to make it a little easier to get in place. We don't want to go too far because it won't recover, but just to give ourselves a little more flexibility as we get back up in there in place.
sticking. Some of these lumps are my wiring and, and things like that, but luckily when we're, when we're not shining a bright camera light on here, you won't really notice it. To see these two panels together, there is a valley. And in that valley, we're going to marry the two pieces together. Brian will explain it next. Okay, now along here, this is a little bit different joint because we're going into a groove. Rather than really butting things up together, what we're going to do is we're actually going to just get the edges and stuff them together into the groove. So what that means is we want a little bit of overlap, which we have perfect here. We're almost maybe a tiny bit short right in this section, but I think we'll be fine. And then once we get up to about here, we're getting a bit too long to stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and cut. And I have a fresh edge on the blade. Now this time I'm not gonna cut through both layers. I'm just carefully gonna, gonna cut it so that I get uh, into the groove well. And I'm just kind of looking as I go to see where I'm at. Now when we get back here, here we're going to have a little bit of a transition because we're back to where, oops sorry, there's no groove to work with. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to the same technique where we're cutting through both layers. So we want to make a cut like right through there. Now there's a window frame that covers this up so we're not too worried about this but down here this will be somewhat visible. We're going to cut this back just a little further and then we're going to go to where we're cutting through both layers at once. And see, now we're to the area where we're gonna tuck things in, so we'll just trim that out. Okay, now we wanna pull our edges. Give ourselves some room there to get our adhesive in the groove. sticky in there. There you go. Gone? Yep. Pretty much. We don't want to bore you with the process, but we don't want to leave anything out. And here's what the majority of the project looks like. It looks awesome, especially when we get the entire interior done. Yeah, I guess I put enough there at least. Where the carpet style headliner butts up to the carpet below, there will be a teak trim piece, and that will make it look sharp. Up next, we'll show how to deal with overspray. In this chapter, we'll quickly show you how easily the overspray comes off with 3M adhesive remover. There's a section here that has overspray that's been sitting for a week or so. It will still come off using 3M adhesive remover from Sayorite. We're going to remove this trim piece towards the bow of the boat, and here you can see the overspray. Yeah. When you plan to DIY your headliner, we always recommend that you purchase 3M General Purpose Adhesive Cleaner as well. You'll always have overspray, sometimes on wood applications. Here we have overspray on a vinyl application. And as you can see, just a little bit on a clean rag and it easily wipes up. This is after a few weeks of sitting as well. The adhesive remover will typically not damage the surface being cleaned, whether it be vinyl, wood, or a varnished, or a stained surface. Brian made trim pieces out of Just PVC there, lumber mm -hmm. and simply yep. stapled foam-backed headliner over it to give it a stylish look. We'll talk about that in the next chapter.
It is always wise to test any chemical cleaner in an inconspicuous spot to be sure it does not damage the surface you're working on. Dirt? I don't think it came from my hands just now. Even stubborn dirt cleans up with the adhesive cleaner. Here's a shot of the finished job. Up next, we'll talk about trim. To hide transitions, like here between the carpet and the hall liner, wood trim strips can be used. Here, we are using teak wood and screwing it in place over the transition, which makes for a beautiful finished look. Another possible solution is to use PVC lumber, which can easily be sourced from any hardware store. Then it can be upholstered with a headliner of your choice. Here we are using the phone backed headliner. We are using a quarter inch staples stainless steel and the easy TC08 staple gun available from Sayorite. Now this upholstered trim can be screwed over transitions and rough edges to give them a finished look. Now let's touch on installing cabinets and trim in areas that are rather shapely. Okay, one thing you'll notice in uh, most production boats is uh, no contours are exact, nothing square. Uh, and so what they do a lot of times, or what, what can be done, is if you have uh, something that's being put in place, this is actually from the factory, this is the, uh, the original uh, rabbit fur, but uh, it's not really rabbit. But uh, what, what was done here was, in order for this panel to come up here and be a nice fit, uh, even with this you can see that there's a bit of a gap there. What they did is they basically filled the gap with, uh, with this material, uh, fur-like material. And so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of mimic that using the same carpet. And as you can see, we've got another place where we have a similar situation. We'll use the carpet style headliner, fold it a few times, and then staple it to the trim. The hissing you hear is not due to the staple gun, but between the connection of the hose and the staple gun. Later on, we repair that by replacing the end of the hose, and that resolves the issue. Since the carpet style headliner was folded several times, we used a staple with a leg length of 3 8 of an inch. These staples are again stainless steel. Doesn't have to be an exact science. At the end of this cabinetry, Brian decides to trim away a little bit of the carpet style headliner and fold it under. I am not sure I would have done that. It does create a little bit of a bump transition here. If you do choose to do this, it's probably a better idea to trim away a little bit more of the excess in the fold. But as you'll see when we're done, it still looks great. Here Brian is removing the old headliner and installing the new carpet style headliner to match. Here's a look at the finished trim above the head and the cabinetry. The proper bedding of screws is very important to keep your new headliner looking good and to avoid water leaks. Okay, Vicky, start pushing. Just gentle push. Good Vicky's push. on the outside of the boat pushing a screw okay. through the hole so that Brian can determine where the screw okay, will push. come through the headliner. Then he creates a slit for that screw so the screw can exit from the headliner. Okay, pull it out. Once all the slits are made in the headliner, we can go back out to the deck and use butyl tape and we will install this butyl tape around the base of the screw underneath our hardware. Butyl tape is a non-hardening elastic material which is great for bedding applications on boats. Butyl tape increases in adhesion with age after it is applied. It can be pressed and formed as Brian is doing here to obtain a water and airtight seal. As you can see Brian is wrapping it around the screw that's been inserted into the hardware. 
for the easiest of application, it is recommended that it be applied at room temperatures. Now it can be inserted into the holes in the fiberglass deck. You will notice that as soon as the hardware is pushed down, the butyl tape will squeeze out from underneath the hardware. That is exactly what we want to happen. Now with someone above deck with a Phillips screwdriver holding the head of the bolt, Brian underneath will install a washer and acorn nuts. The butyl tape escapes even more. Perfect. Okay. Here's a view from inside the cabin with the washer and the acorn nut, all stainless steel. Okay, you ready? Yep. Very nice. Butyl tape is easy okay, to good. clean up. Use a wad of butyl tape and rub it around the excess that is squeezed out from the hardware. It'll clean up beautifully with a wad of butyl tape. Let's have a short discussion about using silicone as a bedding compound. Many sailors find silicone messy and difficult to clean off the boat. To make matters worse, your boat's gel coat is prone to absorb leftover silicone that's squeezed out from under the hardware, and then the silicone attracts dirt. Butyl tape does not. Up next, the materials list and tools that we use to install this carpet style headliner slash hall liner. To see more project tutorials that are similar to this one, click on a video here. In the next few months, you will see multiple new tutorial videos for the 2016 Project Boat, which is a 1982 Regal Ambassador 245XL. Upcoming projects include foam back headliner, bee birth cushions, reupholstering a folding helm seat, upholstered side panels, lounge cushions, cushions with the backer board, luxury woven vinyl flooring, and many more. Be sure to subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel and watch for them on the Sailrite website. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.